This is an introduction to cause mapping, a very simple method of root cause analysis that can start very basic and then can expand into as much detail as you need. And so we'll use the Titanic uh, disaster as a case study to walk through the, the basics of the approach. Uh, my name is Mark Galley. My contact information is on the screen and we'll, we'll show it again at the end. The first thing we need to cover is a simple introduction to a cause and effect relationship. So on the screen it shows an effect. You're going to ask a why question and the response to that why question is because, just like everyone says, and that identifies the cause to the right. So in the cause mapping method we put the effect on the left, and the cause on the right, and then the arrow points from the cause to the effect. The cause occurs before the effect. So this simple relationship is really just a, a building block for uh, laying out an issue. Just why questions and putting the answers to those why questions to the right. And it initially just builds linearly. So what you're going to do is start with the Titanic sinking as an effect. And then there are four causes on the right that you need to organize. And you're just going to ask why questions from the Titanic sinking. And as soon as you answer the why question by saying because, you're going to ask another why question, and you're going to locate where these four causes go. So it's going to build in a straight line, simple why questions. Just take a couple minutes and step through this. Each one of you can build this on your own. Okay, let's take a look how this, how this lays out. Uh, the Titanic sank, if you ask a why question, obviously people say, well, it sank because it had an iceberg. You have some different causes here that require it to be organized with a little bit more detail. So it, it points out the Titanic sank because water filled the hole. And then the next why question is, why did water fill the hole? And the answer is because the ship hit the iceberg. So when the ship hit the iceberg, it allowed the water to run in, which resulted in the Titanic sinking. So you can really read this either direction, but the effect is still on the left and the cause is still on the right. When you ask, why did the ship hit an iceberg with the causes you have, the answer is, well, the ship hit an iceberg because the lookout saw the iceberg late. And then you have 1,500 fatalities as the last box shown here. And that's really an effect of the Titanic sinking. So while we started and said the Titanic sinking was an effect, it's really a cause in this case of 1,500 people dying. So we have a simple set of four why questions that lay out a, a very basic cause and effect analysis. What this ties to in this case is the, the safety goal. So the goal for safety in every organization is zero injuries. So the goal has been affected because there were 1,500 fatalities. There were 1,500 fatalities because the Titanic sank, and the Titanic sank because water filled the hole, and water filled the hole because the ship hit an iceberg, and the ship hit an iceberg because the lookout saw the iceberg late. So that's just five simple why questions. It's known as five whys, but it, it connects five cause and effect relationships together, and it builds as a straight line. It's a very simple, very easy way to begin an analysis. It's, it's accurate and clear. It's visual. It's easy for people to understand, but it is not thorough. So this, while this is a great starting point, there's more detail that can be added. So in your company, when you're working through a problem, it can start very simple. But invariably, people are going to say things like, well, you, you left out some information because the, the plates pulled apart on the hull. And the question is, well, where, where does that, that fit? And you can see that water fills the hull because the plates pull apart. And the plates pulled apart because, in this case, the ship hit an iceberg. So this is now a 6Y. So it started with a 1Y and then continued to build, and it's up to a 6Y. Now this is linear and again very simple. The incidents you're investigating in your business don't stay linear and neither does, does this one. The strength of the rivets are causally related to the Titanic. So you've probably heard about the grade of rivets, their strength. If the rivets were stronger, you could have prevented this incident from occurring. So the question is, well, strength of rivets, how is that causally related? Well, the strength of the rivets 
is a cause of the plates pulling apart. So the ship hit the iceberg and it causes the plates to pull apart, but if the rivets were stronger, the plates still wouldn't have pulled apart. So you're saying well, the plates pull apart because of the force that's applied to the plates. This is really the stress. You could call it the force or the stress of the ship hitting an iceberg. That is one cause and effect relationship. And the plates pull apart because of the strength of the rivets. So the question is, well, what really causes inch and a half thick steel plates to pull apart? Is it the force applied to the plates? Or is it the strength of the jointed connection with the rivets on those plates? And the, the answer is both. Now the benefit of knowing that both of these causes are required to produce this effect, they're both required for the effect to occur, to occur. And because they're both required, you can control this one or you can control this one. Meaning if you just don't hit the iceberg, the plates wouldn't pull apart. But if you did hit the iceberg and the rivets were stronger, you can mitigate the risk or prevent the plates from pulling apart. So the benefit of parallel relationships is it gives you different solution options as you work through the analysis of a problem. Even with additional information, some people in your organization might say, well, the real issue on the Titanic is they didn't have enough lifeboats. Well, lifeboats are causally related to the 1,500 people dying. So the same relationship here that 1,500 people died because the Titanic sank and 1,500 people died because there weren't enough lifeboats. Both of those are required for the people to end up in the cold water, in this case, uh, die. This shows from a, a risk standpoint that it is possible to hit the iceberg and sink the ship, but if you just added more lifeboats, you could prevent this entire loss of life. So adding some lifeboats could make the loss of life smaller. Adding a lot more lifeboats, you potentially could have brought the loss of life down to zero. That is not what happened in the Titanic, but it, gets to, it begins to point out there are different ways to solve a problem. So when you break a problem down into its parts, which is what that root cause analysis does, it gives you different options on solutions to mitigate risk. You can even add the speed in as a cause of why the ship wasn't able to turn and the lookout saw the iceberg late and there were no binoculars, so the Titanic expands into, into much more detail. But this is now a 9Y with three parallel relationships in it. The whole point is that if you're able to break a problem down into its causes, it'll reveal different solution options to mitigate risk. So on this particular incident, you can slow down to mitigate the risk of this issue, which is an operational decision. You can add more lifeboats, which is obviously a safety precaution. You could add more lookouts, which helps you identify icebergs earlier. And you could put in stronger rivets, which is a design issue. So the question sometimes is, is this a management issue on the speed of the ship or an operator issue with what the lookouts did or is it a design issue because of the rivets? And you can see on this simple 9Y, the answer is yes, it's, it's all of those. The whole idea of breaking a problem down into parts is to find different options for solutions. The analysis, as you've seen, can begin very basic. You can begin with something as simple as a 3Y that can expand to a 9Y, and then you'll receive a, a, a handout that shows both a 5Y and a 15Y for this for the same issue and some of the solutions that came out of the, the Titanic. So one of the keys of root cause analysis is breaking a problem down into its parts, starting very simple, and then adding as much detail as you need. Uh, if you'd like any additional information, you can uh, obviously the instructor in your session will have some more about our, uh, our approach, including the handout. And you're uh, welcome to visit our website uh, directly if you'd like to find out about developing these skills within your business to teach your people how to work your issues. So thanks very much. I hope you found this uh, beneficial.